What is going on today, everybody? It's Buddy here. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how I took this super ugly, neglected, beat up looking BMW and turned it into thousands of dollars of profit. So I'm mainly a DIY channel, but I have started a segment on how to flip cars. It's what I do for a living full time. So if you wanna learn how to get potentially profitable vehicles at low prices, how to fix them up and flip them, make a whole lot of money on the back end, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. I'm gonna show you guys the entire process of how I made a few thousand dollars off this BMW from how much I knew I should buy it for, how much I knew I could sell it for, how much money I had to put into it, and ultimately how much profit I made off this. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So most of the cars I buy, I do find on Facebook Marketplace, but it so happens that this BMW was actually posted in one of my Facebook groups that I'm in. Now, I'm not someone who involves myself in the car scene or really participate in any kind of the Facebook car groups. I do join them to find deals though. Most people in these groups are younger and I find it's way easier to negotiate with the younger generation and they're a lot more likely to take the lowball offers. So I was scrolling on Facebook and this popped up in one of the car groups that I'm in. The guy had this exact picture up and said, anyone wanna buy a 2007 BMW 328i? It needs paint, but runs good otherwise. Thinking around 2,200 bucks. So I went ahead and shot the guy a message asking for more pictures and some information on the car. I asked him if there was any engine codes and he said that it ran fine. He told me some woman gave him this car as a payment for fixing her daily driver. So I took a closer look at the pictures of the car and it looks like the whole thing needed a paint job. The hood was completely faded out, the pillars of the car were faded out, the roof was faded out, you can see right here the front of the bumper was faded out. This car needed a complete paint job. But you can see here for a 13 year old car, the interior looks pretty fresh. Besides this little bit of wear on the front seat and this little bit of peeling here on the back console, everything looks pretty good. Now a bit of a disclaimer right here, I don't usually recommend going for European cars like BMWs or Mercedes when you're looking for cars to flip. As we all know, the price of parts can get outrageous for these European cars. But the difference is here, I'm super familiar with these BMWs. My daily driver is the exact model car besides the fact that I have a two door variation of this car. And if you're not sure about a car, I always recommend you do a little bit of research before pulling the trigger. This car has an engine called BMW's N52 engine and it's arguably one of the most reliable inline six engines out there. The transmission on these cars are also super solid. So I know this is something definitely that I want if the price is right. So I did a little research here on Kelly Blue Book just to see what I could sell the car for all fixed up. So it looks like this car sells for about 3,700 to 6,800. Now a good note to keep in mind, with these European cars with a lot of miles, as stated before, this car is 155,000 miles, you wanna kinda of look on the lower end of the Kelly Blue Book because a lot of people are really scared of these. So you definitely wanna price them to sell and go for more towards that lower end of the Kelly Blue Book value when you're going to sell. So $4,000 seems like a very reasonable spot for me to price this car at and get rid of it quick. Now, I don't pay any attention to Kelly Blue Book when I buy a vehicle, even if it's in perfect condition. But the thing you gotta realize is most people default to Kelly Blue Book values when they buy vehicles. So that's always a good standard to look at when you're looking to resell the car. Now, when I buy a car for sale, what I'm always going to look at is this little trade-in tab right here on the Kelly Blue Book page. This is what a dealer is going to give you if you were to go trade in your car in at a dealership. This is always where you wanna be because you know if a dealer is going to buy your car, they're gonna give themselves enough room to make sure that they have a profit margin, even if there's something unknown wrong with the car. So you can see right here, I did put for the condition fair because the car does need an entire paint job. Even though the inside is in really good condition and the engine has nothing wrong with it, fair is definitely where I wanna be considering the whole car needs a paint job. And a paint job isn't necessarily a real cheap thing to do. So now that I've done all my math and I know that there's a profit margin in there for me with this vehicle, so what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna test the seller and I'm gonna see how negotiable he really is on this price with the car. Now, I don't recommend that you do this over text. I always recommend you do all negotiation in person because you have a lot more leverage, but this guy lived two hours away, so I did wanna make sure that he was somewhat negotiable on the price because some people are super firm and no matter what you do, they will not budge on their price. So I wanted to make sure he's not one of those people. And the last thing I wanted to do was drive two hours Hours there and drive two hours back and not even make a car deal happen. So I just kind of threw this out there, $1,100 and I pick it up tonight just to see what kind of seller this guy really was. He denied my super lowball offer, which was expected, but we went a little back and forth here and we actually came to a pretty good agreement at $1,600. Now again, I do not recommend that you do this over text. You always should do this in person, but again, he lived two hours away, so I wanted to make sure that I'm at least getting a deal before I drive up all the way over there and drive back with no car. So 1600 was really close to the bottom end of the trade-in value in fair condition on the Kelly Blue Book page. So I definitely decided that it's a very reasonable price. 
So I set out my two hour drive with 1600 bucks in my pocket. There are a few things I'm gonna look out for in this car. Common issues with this car is a bad water pump, a valve cover gasket leaks, oil filter housing leaks. Now you always wanna do your research about the car you're, they're going to go look at and see if there's any common issues that you should keep an eye out for. It can also be a negotiation tool for getting the price lower. Now something that I always bring with me no matter what kind of car I look at is an OBD reader. I'm gonna put a few links in the description that you guys can pick up ones that I recommend. I'm gonna put a cheaper one, kind of a middle range one and a more expensive one. These are a must have if you're at home DIYer or if you're looking to get into car flipping. So upon arriving at the seller's house, I began to take a good look at the car. The interior looked just as good as the picture shown. The exterior looked awful, but that was expected of course. But my main focus was to check out the engine and electrical components of the car to make sure everything worked all right. I hooked up my OBD reader to the car and got no engine codes, good start. The engine bay looked clean, no leaks coming from common spots, the idle was smooth, it had zero signs of major problems, the radiator reservoir didn't have any signs of oil in there, and the oil cap didn't have any signs of sludge, which would be indicative of a blown head gasket. So good news so far. The windows worked, the sunroof worked, the only thing that didn't work right was the front door locks. This is what they did. So it needed a new door lock actuator. I'm actually familiar with replacing these. I've done it before in other BMWs. The guy was super cool about it and gave me a hundred bucks off the price without me even asking since I told him it's about 90 bucks in parts. During the test drive of the car, everything seemed real smooth. It stopped with a nice idle at red lights. The brakes worked excellent. It accelerated without any kind of puttering. The alignment of the car felt awesome. I was pretty happy with the car. I was ready to offer him that 1600. But like I said before, he took $100 off for the price of the locks. So $1,500 and we shook hands. So it's time to take the keys and make our way back home. Now while I'm driving here, I wanna take a second to mention something about what to look for when buying used cars. As I said earlier, it's always a good idea to do some research on whatever car you're gonna go look at before you show up so you can look for common issues. Now besides the common problems of the specific car you're looking to go buy, I do keep a checklist in my head for things to inspect that will be applicable to any maker model car or truck. I did make a video on the complete guide to buying a used car. This video goes into detail on everything you can do to inspect a used car that you're looking to go buy and give yourself the best chances of not getting ripped off. That video is definitely worth checking out and I'll leave a link for that video in the description below. Now driving it back home was super smooth sailing for the first 100 miles, but right when it was about 15 minutes from my house, the car actually started running really rough. It wasn't alarming enough to pull over and pop the hood or anything, but it was definitely starting to feel weird. It threw a check engine light and the check engine light was not flashing. And for you guys who don't know, if your service now engine light or your check engine light starts flashing, you better stop driving because that's when there's something really wrong. But the check engine light never started flashing and it seemed okay enough to drive. So it made it back the last 15 minutes to the house. So now that the car is back of the house, it's time to start fixing her up and getting her ready for her new home. So the first thing I wanted to address was the check engine light that was thrown when the car started running rough. I hooked my OBD reader up to the car and threw an error code P0300, random or multiple misfire. Now that can be the case of a bad spark plug, a bad coil, your core wiring might be going out, your distributor might be going bad, or you got a vacuum leak or a fuel issue, but more than likely it's just a bad spark plug or a coil and your computer can't tell what cylinder it is so you get a code P0300 and not a code like P0303 showing exactly which cylinder it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is test the spark plugs, the coils, and the coil wiring. Now I did make a video that I will put in the description on how to test the spark plugs, the coils, and the coil wiring in your vehicle to see exactly which plug or coil is bad. That way you're just not shooting in the dark and you know exactly which component's bad. Imagine replacing all the spark plugs and coils in your car and it ends up just being your coil wiring. So this is definitely a necessary step to make sure what component is bad and it'll definitely save you a lot of money in the long run. So I went ahead and swapped out the bad coil for a brand new coil and the car started running beautiful again. So at this point, it's time to start keeping track of how much money we have invested in the vehicle. We have $1,500 for the price of the car. I'm gonna go ahead and add $50 for gas because it was a four hour round trip. And then we also have $25 for that coil. So now that we got that out of the way, it's time to start attacking these broken locks. Remember, they do this every time we press the button. When your vehicle does that, it just means that your locking actuator is busted and you need to replace it with a new one. I did make an entire video here on how to replace a locking actuator in a BMW. They're pretty similar for any vehicle. You essentially just need to take your door panel off, pull out your old actuator, put your new one in, and then screw everything back together. This probably took me about an hour, so it was no big deal. And actually both of the front doors did it, so it was two of them. And after I replaced both door locking actuators, it went from to this.
All right, guys, a moment of truth. Let's try out our lock. Beautiful. So it's time to go back to our money investor chart and add our door locking actuators. And those came out to $78 for the two front doors. So another issue with this car is the day after I brought it home, the sunroof cover fabric started sagging and then completely ripped off. This is also a super common problem on these cars. The good thing about the sunroof cover is it's not too hard to take off. Just a few screws and some clips and it comes right off. I went ahead and restapled it with some regular old staples I had laying around the house and I put everything back together. The whole process only took me about an hour or so. If you are a 3 Series BMW owner, you might want to bookmark this video because it's only a matter of time before you have to do the same thing. I went ahead and reused the same fabric that ripped off because it was in pretty good shape, so we don't need to add any money to the money invested chart. Now, you guys remember the rear console had some peeling paint? Well, I took a drive to my local junkyard to see if they had any BMWs that I could swap the panel with. Now, they had the same car, but it was a black interior. So I went ahead and just bought it anyways. It was five bucks. I popped in the car and honestly, it didn't look too out of place. The car has a black dash, so it kind of blended in. Definitely a lot better than a nasty looking peeling paint one. Now going back to the money invested chart, I'm gonna go ahead and add five bucks for the rear panel that we bought from the junkyard. Now guys, it's time to finally address the elephant in the room. We got the car running good again, the locks working, the nasty peeling paint and the interior cleaned up, but the car is still super ugly. I honestly have no idea what the story is with this paint. It almost seems like some 16 year olds got their hands on some spray paint and spray painted it and put some real cheap clear coat on it. But regardless, we gotta do something with this paint. Now I was thinking Mako, but I've heard some mixed messages about them. Some people will swear they're totally worth it. And some people say it's worth spending more and getting it done by a professional shop that uses higher quality paint. I called my local Mako to see how much a full paint job on a car was. And they said it starts at $499 and goes up from there. I assume the $499 is with the lowest quality paint and that includes zero body work. The car didn't have any major rust besides a few small spots, so the $500 is probably what I was looking at. So take another look at our money invested chart. If I were to do a $500 paint job, the total amount of money we have invested in the car is $2,158. At a sale price of $4,000, that would still leave me with about $2,000 in profit, so not too bad. And then I remembered my good buddy actually from a while back did get a Mako paint job. I decided to give him a ring and get his personal opinion before I pulled the trigger or anything. He told me initially he was very impressed with the quality of work for 500 bucks. But after 18 months, the clear coat started to fade on his truck and some bumbling reappeared on his bumper. Now, I know some of you guys are saying, who cares, it's just a flip, that person's gonna be long gone, it's not gonna be your problem. Well, I'm pretty well known around the area and a lot of people always reach out to me because they know I flip cars and they always ask me if I have anything for sale. The last thing I wanna do is sell a freshly painted car and have it start looking awful again after 18 months. That'll put a ding on my reputation and that's not something I want. You should definitely consider that as well if you want to get into flipping cars. So, change of plan. I was gonna paint the car myself. I wanted to use a good quality paint to make sure it lasted years to come. And since I know this car's engine will last many more years, I wanted the paint to do the same. So I took a trip to my local auto body supplier and bought some sandpaper, some primer, and some good quality single stage paint. And for those of you who are not familiar with single stage paint, I'll explain it real quick. In simple terms, there's generally three layers of paint, your primer, your color coat, and then you got your clear coat that makes the paint nice and shiny. So single stage paint is essentially your clear coat and your color coat mixed up in one. It saves you a lot of time, and if you do it right, it'll look just as good to the untrained eye. So that night, me and my helper spent about an hour sanding all the old clear coat off and making a nice smooth finish. Also, any super deep spots that formed rust, I sanded them down to the bare metal and sprayed them with primer that has a rust inhibitor chemical in it. This is super important step to make sure the rust doesn't come back and ruin your beautiful paint job in the future. We then proceeded to mask the windows, the headlights, the taillights, the grill, to make sure we didn't get paint on anything we didn't want it on. So this is something you guys might wanna look at if you're looking at getting into flipping cars full time. This is honestly one of the best thousand dollars I have ever spent. So the next morning, I set up my inflatable paint booth. Now I will have a video going over this inflatable paint booth, going over all the details about it, so you guys can make an educated decision if you wanna buy one or not. 
Now there are cheaper ones, but I didn't want to get a large one just to make sure that I can accommodate larger SUVs like Armadas or Excursions and make sure I didn't limit myself to the cars that I could paint at my house. So be sure to check out the video for a full thorough review of this inflatable paint booth. I'll leave that here in the description below. So now it's time to prime the car. My girlfriend is pretty good at priming honestly and she likes to do it so I let her blast the car with some primer. And that same night we sanded down the primer with some fine grit sandpaper. Primer fully hardened in about 4 hours at room temperature, so it definitely had plenty of time to harden. We took about an hour doing this to make sure that we got the primer coat nice and smooth and got it ready for the paint coat. That next morning, we set up the paint booth again. Today was a big day. It was time to spray down the car with a fresh coat of paint and be done with it. The single stage paint really saved a lot of time. It's actually a super quick process, maybe about an hour, and the entire car was painted with a beautiful jet black. Now painting a car is a fairly simple process as long as you have the right equipment. Be sure to talk to your local auto body paint supplier with any questions you have and be sure to do your homework before you just jump into painting a car. The worst case scenario is the car is going to have something called an orange peel finish. It almost looks like an orange. Now I do have a video on how to remove orange peel from your car's paint job to make even a bad paint job look professional. Now I will have a video out on the full process that I use to paint a car. By the time you're watching this video, it might already be out, so be sure to check out the description box. So going back to our money invested chart, we spent another $80 on the primer. The single stage paint came out to 90 bucks, and the sandpaper for this job came out to about 8 bucks. I also want to mention when I shoot primer, I just use the $15 Harbor Freight gun and toss it out when I'm done and buy a new one. So we'll go ahead and add that here to the chart as well. So now that we got the car painted, there's one last thing I wanted to do to bring out the beauty in this BMW. And that was to get these ugly faded headlights back to a beautiful shine. I will leave a video on how to restore your headlights in the description. My method is super inexpensive, super quick, and I promise it'll work better than 99% of the garbage products you'll find on the shelf at your local parts store or big box store. So now our BMW is looking absolutely beautiful. I actually posted some pictures of me painting it on my personal Facebook story and it caught the attention of a lot of people on my social media platforms. I had a few people ask me about it and one of my old acquaintances from a mechanic shop that we used to work at a while back stopped by to take a look at it. He tried to haggle me down on it, but I held firm at my price of $4,000 because it was already on the low end of the Kelly Blue Book spectrum. He decided to buy it right there on the spot. Now you don't always get that lucky, but I'm going back to the reputation conversation we had earlier. People know when they're getting a vehicle from me, they're getting a thoroughly looked over and reliable vehicle. So also something to consider, if I were to opt for that cheap paint job because it's just a flip, then it would absolutely come and bite me in the butt selling to someone I personally know. So the lesson of this story is to use quality parts and materials and don't ever look at a car as just a flip. Look at it as a product of the business that you own that you can sell with confidence. So now that we got everything sold, we're going to take one last look at our money invested chart. We got $1,500 for the car, $50 in gas, $25 for the coil, the door lock actuator, the console, the primer, the paint, the paint gun. Everything came out to a total of $1,847. So let's round that up to $1,850. We sold the car for $4,000. So $4,000 minus $1,850 comes out to a profit of $2,150. Not bad at all for just over a weekend of work. Now also guys, if you made it this far in the video, I would love to hear any stories that you guys had of flipping cars or any useful information that you want me to add to the next video I make about flipping cars. Any questions you have for me, be sure to leave them in the comments as well. I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of you guys. Now one last note before I end this video, I didn't have to list this car online only because I got really lucky and sold it before I even had to advertise it. But in my other video where I made a full story about a Chevy Blazer I flipped, it goes over the importance of listing a car correctly and how to get top dollar and also how to attract the most attention. This video goes in some detail about that step and I definitely recommend you check out the video. So thanks for watching guys and happy flipping.